This week, we're coming to you from a beautiful and historic spot. We're coming to you from War Memorial Park in Pass Christiane, or as the folks around here call it, the city park. Now, beautiful because I'm sitting there looking right across Highway 90, the Gulf of Mexico, and historic because these homes surrounding this park survived both Hurricane Camille and Hurricane Katrina. And their history goes back even farther than that because this is like the center of Old Pass Christiane, which back from the mid 1850s on was the Riviera of the Southland. Folks from New Orleans would come over here to vacation to get away from the city and to enjoy the Gulf breezes coming in off the, the, the Mississippi Sound out in front of us here. Now, the Pass Christian Historical Society maintains the integrity of these homes surrounding the park here. But believe it or not, there's an even older home, one of the oldest homes in the state of Mississippi, about 100 miles north of here, that gave birth to the Historical Society up in Marion County. Let's take a look. At the turn of the 19th century, there were settled areas in the state, Natchez to the southwest and spots along the Mississippi River primarily. But the interior of the Mississippi Territory was still largely untamed, but was slowly being opened for settlement. Now, around 1800, Mississippi was the frontier of the United States, although we weren't a state yet. Spain still claimed the territory to the south, and France was across the Mississippi River, so if you wanted to go out west back then, this is where you came. So a fellow from the Carolinas, a Methodist minister by the name of John Ford, brought his family to what is today Marion County and found his spot not too far from the Pearl River and built this, what we call the John Ford home today. This house would be the other antebellum. Now we think of the palatial mansions on the plantations when we hear antebellum home, but any structure built before the Civil War was antebellum. And there were way more of these type buildings in Mississippi back then than the mansions. History seemed to find the Fords in their new home the first decade they lived here. Uh, the first year they had the uh, Rebellion of West Florida in 1810 that they were uh, right here by. Uh, the next year had the New Madrid earthquakes in 1811. Of course, 1812 had the war with Britain started. Uh, 1813, they had the massacre over here at Fort Mims, Alabama, where all the settlers were killed. Uh, they built a stockade around the house at that point. Uh, 1814, Andrew Jackson's coming back to uh, fight the British. He stays at the house on November the 27th of 1814. The next year, the Pearl River Convention happens here at the house where they uh, petition Congress to create the state of Mississippi. Uh, the next year, Mississippi is the 20th state in the Union. And then 1818, they have the Mississippi Methodist Conventions here. And so it was just a history packed with all kinds of events. Andrew Jackson's room is pretty much unchanged from the way it was when he stayed here, with the exception his picture wasn't on the wall then. They call this the presidential suite, although Jackson was still a decade and a half away from his presidency. Rachel Baker's a tour guide in the house and says the general and future president was allowed to stay indoors only on certain terms. Mrs. Ford said that there was a couple of things he couldn't do. He couldn't cuss and he couldn't drink and he had to attend the family prayer meetings every night. Well, he didn't, he didn't, and he did. Other notables no doubt visited or at least passed by back in the day. There was another future president that roamed around this part of the country quite a bit back then. This house was a landmark early on in this region. Uh, the, the main roads that ran through here all ran within close proximity of this house. Uh, we have it on a document. There was a young lieutenant colonel named Zachary Taylor was in the Fordsville neighborhood at that time. So uh, there's no doubt that all these famous people would have seen this house as they passed through here during back in the day. But what's more important about the John Ford home is not who saw it back then, but what we get to see here today. It's the oldest uh, frontier-style home in the state of Mississippi. Um, it's said to be the only one that has not been remodeled 
or restored. It has been kept just in its original condition, which makes it extremely unique. The timbers used to build this house were carved from the Pearl River swamps, virgin pine and cypress. Some of the sills running the entire length of the house are hewn from single trees. The bricks were fired on site. Down below the main dwelling are the kitchen and dining areas. Most of the furniture here is original to the house. Up above is the living room and the bedrooms. And again, most of the furniture in these rooms is original to the house. And way up above is a spacious attic. And the reason the house has so much of the original furniture was, as pieces were replaced over the years, the old pieces weren't thrown away, but were put here in the attic. So as the house was being put back in the condition it was originally, pieces from the attic were pulled out and put back in rooms where they used to be. The John Ford home stayed in one family from the time it was built until the time it was sold in the 1960s. During that time, other colorful members of the community lived here. The post office in the front room is a reminder of one of them. Willie Rankin was a Ford descendant. He was a rural mail carrier. His distinction? He weighed 467 pounds, making him the largest rural mail carrier in the United States. One more distinction derived from the John Ford home. In the 1960s, when it became known, the descendant living in the house at that time wanted to sell it. Afraid history may be lost in the process, a group of people banded together and purchased the John Ford home with the idea of preserving it for us. That band of people became the Marion County Historical Society. And they have a museum in downtown Columbia as well as maintaining and giving tours of the John Ford home. And the home is the reason for the historical society's coming into being. It is the other antebellum, the best example of a pioneer dwelling in the Pearl River Valley, one acquainted with the hard scrabble life of the frontier, preserved so we can see how the working folks lived 200 years ago when the state wasn't even a state and way before everything changed so much. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads.